Hi guys, welcome to Go Global. Molo. Who's that? That means hello in Oza. What's Oza? Oza is one of the 11 languages spoken in South Africa. Oh, so I guess we're going to South Africa today. Yes, we are. So that means it's time to... Go, Go Global! Global! I'm Natalie. And I'm George. We're on safari in the Kalahari Desert in South Africa. This desert is so big that it goes into two other countries, Namibia and Botswana, as well. Look, there's a zebra. Shh, George. We'll scare them all away. I'm trying to spot all of the animals, but every time George sees one, he shouts and scares them all away. You've got to be quiet on a safari. Sorry Natalie, I get so excited when I see a lion or a rhino or a giraffe or an elephant! George! Where? Just over there. Look through your binoculars. You can see all sorts of things through these. Have a look through yours at home too. Look George, it's an elephant. Wow! Did you know that elephants are the largest living land mammals in the world? I'm really not surprised. Look at the size of it! Wow, look, it's a cheetah. They are so far. Yes, George. In fact, they are the fastest land animal on the planet. Wow, that's really cool. Oh, look, monkeys. That's not any old monkey, George. That's a baboon. One of the 264 types of monkey in the world. Wow, that's a lot of monkeys. It is. Well, be careful, George, it's a rhino. Maybe I'm just standing there. Did you know that a rhino's horns are made of the same stuff that fingernails and hair is made up of. Really? Look, I'm a rhino. Stop poking me, George. <sighs> Sorry, Natalie. That was a lot of animals, though, wasn't it? What's that large mountain over there? That would be Table Mountain. Table Mountain? Doesn't sound like a mountain. Where's the pointy top bit? Ah, well, 300 million years ago, it was covered in lots and lots of ice and it forced the top of the mountain down. And that's why it's now flat. Oh, wow! Table Mountain is actually believed to be one of the oldest mountains on the Earth. And it has more species of plant than the United Kingdom, just on the mountain alone. Really? What's that I can see over there? That would be Tegela Falls. That's a waterfall, right? That's right. Tegela Falls is the second highest waterfall in the world. It's water falls from a height of 2,789 feet. Is that taller than the Big Ben? Yes, it's almost nine times bigger. Wow! I don't want to fall off there then. <laughs> no, I don't think it'd be a very good idea, George. Oh. What's that I can hear? That is probably the sound of the sand, or as they are also called, the Bushmen. Uh, who are they? Well, they are a South African tribe. There are many tribes in South Africa, also including the Zulus, which is where I got the idea for this from. Ah, that's really scary. Don't be silly, George. It's just a mask. The Zulus use them for festivals and to guard their houses. They also have ceremonies where the Zulus whisper their most important secrets into the mask. If you want one too, I could show you how to make one. Oh, yes, please. Right, let's make our way to Table Mountain. Oh, oh that was a trek. Oh, I'm really worn out now. Think you need to do some more exercise, George? Yeah. Okay, you'll need all these materials to make our tribal masks. Two pieces of cardboard, scissors, brown paint, white paint, string, and any decorations you want. We have feathers on ours. 
Right, you need to start by drawing a mouth shape on one of the pieces of cardboard, like this. Okay. So it's like, what sort, is it just like a big teardrop sort of shape? Yeah. Okay. Nice and large. Can it be any other shape? Yeah. If you want, you can do any shape that you like, but this is the traditional shape. Oh, okay. Okay, then you need to draw the shapes on the nose, the yeah. eyebrows, and the mouth on some other pieces of cardboard like this. Okay, these are funny shapes, aren't they? They're like a... Weird sort of triangle. Kind of like a the chimney. The flat top. A bit like Table Mountain, I suppose. <laughs> a bit like Table Mountain. Okay, and then you've got large semicircles for okay. the mouth. Yeah. And that's then some smaller semicircles. Okay. For these are, the these eyebrows. are funny shapes as well, aren't they? Yeah. Like they're not there quite semicircles, are no. they? Okay. Right. Then we need to cut them all out. Oh, can I help with the cutting? I think you should leave that to me, George. Yeah, go ahead. You might want to get an adult to help you with the cutting. Okay. Right. Save time. We're just going to pop ours out. So if we just pop these out. Right, George, what I need you to do yeah. is I need you to stick these together. Okay. So it's nice and thick to stand out from the mask. Yeah. So you just sort of... Just lots of glue, stick them together, and then what I want you to do is I want you to stick the mask, uh, the mouth down this end of the mask. Okay, which way up does it go? Like that? Yep, that's it. Yeah? Yep, with a flat bit on the top. Okay. Just get a nice even spread that's of glue right. there. Make sure it's... And then what we also need to do is draw some eye holes on so we can cut those out later. Okay. That's just a square shape. Yeah. Just up here, yeah? That's it. Awesome. Okay. Right, so what we need to do now is we need to pop the mask out. Yeah. We'll be cutting this out at home, so make sure you get an adult to help you. Okay. Okay, okay. so we get rid of that. Ooh, bit stuck. There we go. <laughs> right, then you need to paint it brown. Oh yeah, that's where we get. We're right. using brown, but you can use any colour that you like. So, if you just do a little bit, George, just yep. to show the boys and girls at home. Okay, what we're going to do is we've got a pre-done one. Ooh. So, here we go. Oh, that looks wicked. There we go. Right, what we need to do now is we need to decorate it. Oh, it's where we get creative, right? That's right. Yeah. Right, we're going to paint some dots and stripes on it like a traditional tribal mask. Okay. So we've, if you, the traditional colour is to use white, but you can use whatever colour you want. This time, George is going to use a light brown. Get some dots down the middle like that. That's it, yeah. That looks good so far. Yeah, that's right. Should I do some stripes on his cheek? Yeah. Do you reckon that will look cool? That's it. Looking like a bit of an army man. Looking good, George. Okay. What there we're we going to do now is we're just going to pop the eye holes out. Okay. There we go. So, if you want to, you could always add feathers mm. or streamers on it. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll keep that up there. Yeah. Um, so, in the end, once you've added all the streamers on, so you've got to do this one, all your painting is dry, it'll look a bit like this. Yeah. That looks really good, doesn't it? It's a little bit scary, though, I think. There's nothing scary about these masks. All the tribes that wear them. Traditional African tribes like the Zulus not only wore masks like these, but they often use them as shields in battle too. Oh, I want to learn more about these Zulu guys. They sound really interesting. Well, why don't we see what our friends at St. Lawrence Primary School got up to as they were learning some bits of the Zulu language with our friend Alex. We're here. It's raining, but we're at St. Lawrence Primary School and we're ready to sing a song with Zulu words in it with the children. Let's go inside. One, two, three, four. Walk into South Africa, what do I see? I can see you voodoo looking at me. Walk into South Africa, what do I see? I can see in yoga looking at me. Walk into South Africa, what do I see? I can see you cozy looking at me. Walk into South Africa, what do I see? I can see in Tofu looking at me. I've had a great day here at St Lawrence learning the song with the kids. I hope you enjoyed it at home too and I hope you were singing really loud. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks Alex, that was great. I'm going to have that song stuck in my head all day now though. 
A foodie was definitely my favourite word. But do you know what time it is now? What time is that? It's competition time! Oh yes, that's right. Shall we have a look at last week's winner? Yes. The winner of our competition last week is Tim with a design for the Austrian Daffodil Festival called Nazism Fest. His idea was a picture of a mountain. And thanks to our runners up, Michael from Spalding and Cara from Bolton. What about this week's competition? Well, this week it's a question to answer. Oh, I'm terrible at these. I always get the answers wrong. Well, obviously you don't pay as much attention to the show as our viewers at home, do you, George? It's okay, George. This week's question is, how many languages do they speak in South Africa? Is the answer A, 3, B, 5, or C, 11? That's a tough one. To, win, uh, to get a chance at winning a trip to Chesterton Zoo to see some of the animals you saw in today's programme, visit our website at www.goglobal.co.uk. Also on our website, you can find our Go Global Passports, in which you can find the top 10 facts about each of the countries that we have visited. You can also play a variety of games, including Go Global, the Global Quiz, the Forest Blotter and Country Hopper. As well as this, you can find plenty of colouring in sheets if you prefer to be more creative. You most certainly can. Right, George, I think it's time we say Hamba Kabul, which means goodbye, and get ready to leave South Africa now. But what country are we visiting next week, George? Oh, next week we're visiting... Israel! Where's that? Well, you'll have to wait until next week to find out. Right, we best go get on the Go Global plane. Make sure you join us again next week for another exciting adventure on... Go, go Global! Global! Wait, the...